Hello and warmly welcome to Sapon Asia YouTube channel. It's 155th episode. Holger, we are really good. Today is August 10th. And today uh, with Holger and Robert, we are here to talk everything and anything about the SAP and Microsoft. Mm -mm. Today we have a guest, uh, Dennis and Ralitza, and on a very interesting topic. Basically, a long story, make it short. Um, we have a different high availability concept in the past and still valid, like availability sets and availability zones. And in availability zones, sometimes you would also combine with availability set, and sometimes you need to use some something called proximity placement group to bring the stuff closer, which sometimes creates a challenge in, in deployment. Now we have a third one, which is called virtual machine scale set, which will hopefully <clears throat> fix and, and help customer to solve many of these issues and simplify the whole stuff. Now, uh, before we start with Dennis and Ralitza, um, we have some news and Holger, basically, I think it's, it's, I mean, these weeks is everything is about the AI, right? So let, let, let's check what do you, what did you find? Yeah, so actually, before we go to the AI topics, let, let me quickly talk about some of the <laughs> Um, analysts that that have released now the um, Gartner Magic Quadrant. So there's there's a release for RPA for robotic process automation, and um, I mean um, Microsoft plays a big role obviously there with RPA um, as part of our Power Platform. And yeah, it's it's good to see that that Microsoft is um, clearly here in this in this leader quadrant. Interestingly enough, if we look at the Forrester Wave, so um, similar thing. I mean, obviously the different. Um, different analysts that that provides here an, an update but Forrester Wave um, released something for low code development platforms and also there it's really nice to see that Microsoft is very clear here in this um, leader scenario so so it's very obvious if, if you want to do something with low code then I think it's it's very good to go um, with the power platform the power platform is also um adding more and more AI related scenarios. So, so the whole Copilot platform that is available with GitHub Copilot is available with Microsoft 365 Copilot, Windows Copilot that, that, that will be um, out soon, the whole BizChat um, topic with Copilot. So there's a lot of things that Microsoft is doing. But actually, um, as we also talked about before, if we switch over to the to the SAP side, there's also um, a nice new article that talks about generative AI with SAP. And I mean, um, I think SAP talked also about this at, at, at Sapphire, <clears throat> that they have their um, um, SAP business AI functionalities, and they are working very much with um, partners on enabling and exposing um, these AI services. And now, obviously, SAP is um, not talking about, in, in, in most cases, like who is the, the, the partner. So if you go through through this list here of these examples, um, you can see some really cool um, <laughs> examples. Um, but obviously, we know um, that uh, we can guess. We can make a, edu a very educated guess because obviously you have seen um, the <clears throat> Sapphire keynote where where um, SAP talked about the success factors integration. So so the integration of um, generating a job um, profile description using Word Copilot and 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 combining success factors and copilots. And if you look at some of these others um, other scenarios, you might also find some some good similarities. I would say so. It's it's clear SAP is also investing there a lot in these scenarios um, with um, with partners, and I think um, we'll see some cool um, additional integration scenarios leveraging yeah generative AI and SAP in the future. One last thing that I want to quickly highlight, and um, we we talked about UI five con, um, so remember we had this hackathon to connect um, uh, Cosmos DB. Uh, with um, CUP, with the Cloud Application Programming Model. And after that, after our hackathon, there was also UI5Con. And there are some really, really cool sessions. And, and one session that I want to highlight is this one, um, Excel Upload in UI5 Made Easy with Open Source. And, and that's something that is really, really cool session. So um, Marianne Zeiss and, and Peter Musik, um, they, they, they uh, did this session and they they have developed basically um, a, a framework, an open source framework that allows you to enhance an SAP Fiori user interface um, with a button or with the possibility to upload Excels um, or data from an Excel um, into the Fiori and then from there, obviously, in the SAP system. So um, there's a really nice tutorial how to do this, 
Um, and, and since we all know, I don't think there's one SAP customer that is not using Excel. Um, this is a perfect fit, I would say, for a lot of scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> so that was all that I had, Goran, uh, for, nice. for, for this week. Now, 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 I would always like to say, let's now switch back to the real stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a ah, come on. Oh, that's a just joke you know everything is important you know one big it is audio yeah. yeah 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 um dennis and ralitza we had you in the past uh but maybe for the for the folks who are seeing you for the first time can you do a short introduction so maybe ladies first uh, let's stay with ralitza okay thank you so um my name is ralitza delcheva I'm on the SAP engineering team at Microsoft. Um, we are um, in charge, so to speak, for um, reference architectures for SAP workloads on, on Azure. And um, I'm focusing on high availability reference architectures. I mean, we do a lot of other cool stuff, but for the purpose of today's call, um, I think the important one is the, the reference architectures and the testing we do with different um, Azure features and constructs to, to see what is the best fit um, for SAP on Azure. Dennis? Yeah, uh, it's good to be back in this channel. Yeah, I'm Dennis. Uh, I'm the same team as Relita. I'm an SAP engineering team in Microsoft. So uh, our um, it's, uh, focus area is in line with like uh, creating reference architecture uh, for SAP workload on Azure. And uh, I uh, basically work on some of the high availability disaster recovery stuff. Plus, as I mentioned, by Relita, we work on some interesting cool stuff, but uh, uh, I uh, means we have invested a lot of effort on this uh, today's topic, virtual machine scale set, which we will be talking about in a few minutes now. Yep, Super. and um, I mean Dennis was essentially the the lead from from our team on um, the MSS Flex for for SAP. I mean, no need to be modest here. I mean, take the credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's 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 jump into the content. Yeah. So tell us a bit more. Yes. So what let, what's all about? Yeah, let's let me share my screen. Uh, are you guys able to see the screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, just to like basically before we start the virtual machine scale set, let me uh, set our today's agenda what we will be talking about like with respect to virtual machine scale set. So we will be focusing more on the overview of virtual machine scale set and what specific thing is supported for SAP workload. Uh, the benefits of using uh, a flexible scale set for SAP workloads, some consideration and reference architecture will be focusing on that as well. What is the ideal reference architecture when we are deploying SAP workload with scale set? And uh, some of the example on how to configure scale set and how we can deploy a VM in that scale set. And then we will touch upon some of the uh, 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 comparison between different deployment options as uh, uh, we. Uh, Goran already mentioned we have availability set availability zone and now we will be we are having virtual machine scale set so we will be seeing a comparison across all three options and then we will touch upon some of the HA and non HA architecture scenarios on that so with that let me uh, quickly before we I jump into this uh, virtual machine scale set uh, I just want to emphasize like give like uh, to talk about like in Azure basically uh, uh, the VMs are usually deployed. We can deploy VMs in uh, regionally or zonally. OK, so now if we, I want to deploy my uh, VM in Azure regionally, so I need to it's, uh, I, I mm, the construct that is being offered to do a regional deployment is availability set. OK, the reason why availability set is offered is basically to distribute my VM in that particular region in different fall domain and update domain so that in case of platform maintenance not all my vms will be impacted due to it so if the customer wants to deploy the vm in regionally we offer a construct called availability set where uh, vms are distributed on different fall domain and update domain similarly uh, as we have expanded and as we have introduced more and more uh, 
uh, means region with the availability zone. We have expanded our horizon to different availability zone within a region. So we started offering a deployment in an availability zone. So availability zone as People are already familiar that it consists of a, a single data center or a set of data center within a single zone. So where a zone becomes a single point of failure. So if now a, a customer wants to deploy their VMs in availability zone, they could deploy um, um, zonally. They could deploy uh, the VMs in uh, availability zone. So at the time of VM creation, we have like we choose the deployment option whether to uh, do uh, an availability set deployment or an availability zone deployment. That means we are doing a regional deployment or a zonal deployment. OK, uh, over the period of time, like uh, uh, availability set become a synonym of a regional deployment. So every time we basically emphasize we talk about availability set, we uh, it, it's it's uh, quite natural that people are talking about like uh, a, a regional deployment. So now we as we already have this two deployment where we can basically deploy our VMs regionally and zonally. Uh, uh, we are uh, we are started offering this virtual machine scale set which combines uh, this two deployment in a single scale set based on that based on how the virtual machine scale set is created. So if we look into it uh, into that is like virtual machine scale sets are basically a logical grouping of platform virtual machines. So we can basically combine. So if you want to deploy your uh, VMs regionally, you can create a virtual machine scale set which can basically deploy your VMs regionally. It's based on how you basically create your virtual machine scale set, which we will be looking into it on how we can define a virtual machine scale set. Uh, and that basically describes where uh, whether your VMs will be deployed regionally or whether it will be deployed uh, uh, zonally. OK, so uh, I think uh, uh, on Azure virtual machine scale set in particular uh, is available from a long time. OK, the first foremost uh, offering with virtual machine scale set was uniform orchestration, which basically didn't work very well for SAP workload because it had some limitations and all that. Uh, but recently, um, like a virtual machine scale set with flexible orchestration uh, came into picture where uh, uh, which is much more suitable for SAP workload where we can basically mix a different operating system VM SKUs in a single uh, flexible scale set. Okay. Uh, then it's basically when I think the uniform one, I mean, the first thing when I heard about the virtual machine scale set, which is bound yeah. to the uniform orchestration was like kind of use case of automatical scale out and scale in. Yeah, yeah. And, yes. and that was immediately when you put that in the SAP context, you're thinking, ah, oh, this is something for the app server layer, you know. Yes. But actually yes. it's not. It's we're talking about virtual machine scale set with flexible orchestration, which is a basically not not a scale out scale in but kind of deployment model right? yeah. uh, yes Gordon you got it right plus uh, we I will emphasize on that because uh, virtual machine scale set is not just about uh, the scaling and scale out of virtual machine it is basically uh, work as a deployment framework as well now for SAP workload we will be focusing more on the deployment framework part not on right. the feature of scaling and scale out OK, so I will be mentioning that like what is basically I mean by scaling and scale out like uh, but uh, to go with the flow, it's like uh, for uh, SAP workload, we uh, we are just supporting the flexible orchestration. So that's the reason why we say a uh, VMS is flex because it represents the virtual machine scale set with flexible orchestration. So, yeah, so for, for SAP, we, we're not really talking about scaling in and out of yeah. the, the workload that that's not I mean we're really using it as a as a deployment pattern um, yes similar to to what Dennis introduced already that we have been doing historically with availability set and then with the availability zone assignment yeah 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 so now as I mentioned like uh, and VMs can be deployed and regionally and zonally. So how it can be fit with when I basically deploy my VM in VMSS Flex. So in VMSS Flex, 
in order to define your scale set, whether to be deployed regional or a zonal, you can basically define a, a platform fault domain counts. For the regional deployment, the virtual machine scale set offer a platform fault domain count greater than one. So you can specify a number of fault domain that you want, just like in a VLT set, you can specify a number of fault domain and update domain, whereas in VMSS Flex, you can define a number of fault domain in regional deployment. There is no update domain here. Update domain has been deprecated in VMSS Flex. Uh, so uh, the VMs that will be part of this VMSS Flex for regional deployment will be distributed on the specific uh, on the number of fault domain that has been defined. You can choose on which fault domain you can basically want to deploy your VM. But uh, the thing is like uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have not released this scenario for FD greater than one. Uh, so we will be focusing on this zonal deployment part where uh, the virtual machine scale set, when we create a virtual machine scale set, we can create a, uh, we can define the zone. And in that case, we just we can just define the platform fault domain count equal to one. So I just want to emphasize that here the platform fault domain count equal to one doesn't mean that uh, my all my VM that will be part of this VMSS flex will land into a single fault domain. Here the platform fault domain count equal to one means uh, the max spreading option. Max spreading is like my uh, VMSS Flex will take care of max spreading your VM on different fault domain on best effort basis without guaranteeing the storage to compute fault domain alignment. So uh, here, uh, uh, so uh, so don't consider that FD equal to one means my all my VM that will be part of this VMSS Flex will land into a single fault domain. Here it, the option uh, it means that it will max spread to different fault domain on best effort basis. Uh, I'm emphasizing on best effort basis as well because like uh, 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 if there is some issue on the capacity or something, uh, uh, it won't fail. It will land like some of the VMs will land on the same fault domain. But in uh, in uh, in general, uh, the VMSs will try to basically max distribute your VM on different fault domain. So now I just want to emphasize the benefit here as we are just talking here. Uh, what is the difference between then? What is the difference between uh, availability zone when we deploy my VM in availability zone as well as uh, I deploy my VM using VMSS Flex with FD equal to one in zonal deployment? So in in availability zone, each VM that is part of the availability zone when you deploy your VM, uh, you define an availability zone. Each VM is independent. So uh, if we talk about SAP workload where I have like five virtual machine in one zone and five virtual machine in another zone. So now if I'm defining my VM one in zone one uh, and VM two in zone one, then basically my VM two doesn't have an idea that where my VM one in zone one has landed on which fault domain because in availability zone deployment, each VM is independent. It doesn't have that this two VMs are uh, basically part of the single SAP system. OK, so there are high chances that um, multiple VMs will land into the uh, uh, a single fault domain. Yeah. Whereas uh, if you're talking about the virtual machine scale set, it is a construct. So uh, for a single system, all the VMs with, which is part of a, uh, uh, that virtual machine scale set. So virtual machine scale set an idea. So if my if I deploy my application server VM in zone one, uh, the scale set will try to distribute the second VM on different fault domain because it has an idea that where my VM uh, first VM has landed, so it will max distribute your VM on best effort basis. So with uh, uh, zonal deployment, if we are going with FD equal to one with VMSS flex, um, uh, it for application server, it will try to max distribute your VM on different fault domain. So that is the big advantage here uh, uh, because in availability zone, you don't get so basically people mix with availability set and all that stuff. But with uh, VMSS flex, you don't have to do it. Uh, it will max distribute your VM on different fault domains. So uh, uh, with that, like I just wanted to touch base before I talk to the next thing, uh, like uh, the architecture. So uh, what I was saying, so uh, as we are focusing like uh, uh, for SAP workload, we are just we are supporting right now the FD equal to one option, which is basically a zonal deployment. So if we are talking about uh, specific to an SAP uh, workload, so so the how a reference architecture would look like for SAP workload if we are deploying with VMSS Flex. So if we are like 
we need to just like an availability set that needs to be created before a VM could be deployed on that availability set. Similarly, a, a construct for VMSS Flex also needs to be created before we can deploy a VM into this VMSS Flex. Uh, so, uh, uh, so when we create a VMSS Flex, you can define the number of zone and you can define the fault domain equal to one. So when we are doing a zonal deployment, when we are defining the zone, you cannot go uh, with a platform fault domain count greater than one. You can only define with FD equal to one. But as I mentioned, FD equal to one means max spreading. The scale set will try to distribute your VM on different fault domain. So in this case, uh, once the scale set has been created, you mm, we can basically deploy our SAP component like database, central services, and SAP layer, application layer. So now in the database, the primary database and ASC is a, basically a single point of failure for uh, SAP application server. So as this has been distributed across different zones, um, we can basically deploy yeah, my primary database on zone one on that scale set and uh, secondary database on zone two on that particular scale set. The scale set can expand on different zone. As you have already mentioned, different zones in that scale set. Uh, we can deploy our VM on different uh, zones altogether into a single scale set. Same similarly with ACS and ERS primary means on zone one and ERS on zone two. Now when we talk about the application server. So in application tier, what's, we have multiple application server running on zone one and uh, even on zone two, we have multiple application server running. So in that case, what happens is like uh, as this is part of a single scale set, uh, I, uh, the scale set will tries to distribute my application server VMs on different fall domain that that you could not get with uh, only with availability zone deployment. Yeah, so, so this is one of the this is one of the big advantages actually of um, of using um, VMSS Flex with with FD equals to one. So you don't have to do the combination we did before with PPGs. Yes. I mean, it simplifies essentially yeah. the the deployment. I mean, yeah. when I think, I mean, the reference architecture which is still valid for the zones. I mean, OK, everything those VMs I'm comparing with the upper picture high availability scenario, they could be a zone one. But we also say, yeah, maybe it's even better way to for the app servers in each zone have an own availability set because that would then distribute it across the different fault zones. OK, right. and the only way to combine the availability set with the region is through the proximity placement group. Exactly. Which yeah. kind of all setup is a bit yeah. complicated and here you have just one VMSS flex construct. Yeah, you and have you just one construct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. One yes. construct. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. yeah, that simplifies the architecture a lot and that basically brings the flexibility to the customer on even as we basically emphasize on PPG earlier, like uh, the PPG basically has a restriction where the VM size is not basically uh, people are not, I mean, customer is not able to resize their VM because of the capacity issue that basically been left out if yes. we deploy uh, a VM in this VMSS flex because there is less chance of encountering that issue with the uh, yeah. Uh, um, with the VM, and that that so, would be another big advantage. I would yes. definitely say because yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah. are le less constraints on the capacity, definitely, which yes. more much more successful rate of deployment and less challenges yeah. there. Yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. So this architecture basically means uh, as we focusing on just for the zonal deployment, it works best for cross zonal deployment. Uh, so if we want a uh, uh, want to deploy your SAP system on a single zone, we uh, we advise you to do it for non-production uh, uh, system where uh, for non-SAP system or non-production SAP system, you can create a virtual machine scale set with a single zone with FD equal to one, uh, where you basically um, uh, uh, configure all the component of database AAC as an application server on a single VMSS flex. So this is basically with respect to how you can deploy your SAP workload uh, NHA and non HA SAP system on uh, with a VMSS flex and we advise like if you are doing a, a cross zonal deployment, we advise to use a virtual machine scale set with FD equal to one over the availability zone uh, deployment because that brings you uh, much more uh, as we discussed the flexibility as well as uh, uh, the distribution of VMs on different fall domain. So uh, 
I just want to cover one more point, which uh, I think uh, is important is like uh, as uh, Gordon earlier mentioned, like uh, when we talk, think about the virtual machine scale set, we think like with respect to scaling and scale out. So that feature is basically available. So currently, if we deploy a virtual machine scale set, um, uh, we create virtual machine scale set. It can be created using a scaling profile or a without scaling profile, along with how you want to deploy regionally or zonally. So basically, uh, when a virtual machine scale set, you, you define a, a scaling profile. When I say scaling profile, what does it mean? Uh, it means you attach a VM template with a VMSS flex. So uh, uh, so for um, a general web application server based on some threshold value, if you want to scaling and scale out based on the your workload, you can do it using this virtual machine scale set. So um, uh, with uh, a scaling profile, you attach a VM template where you define the VM SKUs the OS, um, the disk that you need and basically um, the OS image or the or some custom script. So uh, when you define all this, uh, uh, define this in a template and attach to a VMSS flex, what will happen is like uh, if you want to scale out your application, suppose if your five VMs are running in a VMSS flex and if you want to scale out using uh, some threshold that Made, that has been met and you want to increase your instance count from five to seven. So the additional two instance that will be created you inside this VMSS flex will use this VM template or the scaling profile to basically use the VM SKUs or uh, the disk and um, run the custom script to basically uh, provide it to the customer that that can scale out their application. But this scaling profile doesn't work uh, seamlessly for SAP workloads. So currently uh, we are not supporting a virtual machine scale set with scaling profile, so we cannot do a scaling scale out for uh, uh, for SAP workload. Uh, currently virtual machine scale set uh, we are leveraging as a deployment framework uh, where we are creating a virtual machine scale set without a scaling profile. So where we don't define a VM template, we just uh, create a construct just like an availability set. So we create a construct and where we define zones and platform fault domain equal to one. Yeah, uh, so good, good, good intro on on the yeah. skill sets. But maybe let's come back to to uh, the considerations uh, for for using the MSS Flex for for SAP deployments. Yep. Yes, because there so, are things which customers need to to consider. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, I mean, as we already discussed this reference architecture, and I think we already covered all the benefits of this version while we were talking about the reference architecture is like the cross zonal SAP deployment, uh, uh, simplified architecture, as we mentioned, and increase the flexibility that uh, reduces the failure due to capacity um, limitations and all that stuff. So that's our, that. On this we are really a strong advantage to deploy your VMs across zone with VMSS Flex. So now if we focus on the consideration of flexible scale set for SAP workload. So in this case is like uh, we have everything this uh, documented as well in our official learned on Microsoft.com. But uh, uh, but just to uh, emphasize on this, uh, like what we recommend is like what needs to be considered if you want to deploy your SAP workload on VMSS Flex, like for each SAP system for single SID, create a, sing a separate flexible scale set. OK, and basically uh, as we are um, supporting only for the zonal deployment with FD equal to one, you can deploy all your components with respect to database, ACS and um, uh, and application tier on a single flexible scale set. Uh, for high mobility, we uh, we recommend is like to use a standard load balancer if we uh, VM attached to this VMSS flex and uh, uh, you can basically enable the managed system identity uh, for if you're using a fence agent to any to configure fence agent. If you're using MSI, it needs to be enabled at uh, the VM level. So if you are configuring a VM into VMSS Flex, you need to enable the managed system identity at the VM level. The capacity reservation can be enabled uh, uh, with uh, on the individual VM. You can basically enable the capacity reservation of a VM that is part of VMSS Flex at, at, at the VM level. So, but uh, I just want to reiterate that if there is a limitation 
uh, uh, anchored to the capacity reservation that will be applied to yeah. VM <laughs> that is part of the VMSS as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so better not sure. to here. Yeah. yeah. Without it, we, we would have less capacities uh, limits, so to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, as we already mentioned that we don't advise to use PPG uh, in combination with uh, flexible scale set with FD equal to one. And now the interesting thing, like if someone is using a multi uh, as, uh, SID for ASES, ERS environment. So if you have ASES, ER, and if you're using m m more than one uh, ASES, ERS into a single cluster, uh, how the deployment framework will look like. So for uh, suppose for a system one, SAP system one, you can basically have a virtual machine scale set um, created where you can deploy all the component and all that. And for the second system, if you're using ACS ERS of the first system, which is configured in a high availability, for the second system for database and application tier, you can configure a second of uh, uh, VMSS flex. Uh, similarly, like uh, mm, uh, for the third, so whichever, like how many multi SID, it's, the restriction still applies, like how many multi SID is supported based on the distro. Uh, so make sure that uh, uh, you configure your VMSS flex accordingly. Uh, so now if we talk about like as uh, as I was mentioning, like we need to create a construct with VMSS flex just like an availability set. So now uh, if we are talking about this uh, flexible. So this is set. this is this is the start of the process, right? So customers yeah. who are interested in, in working with VMSS flex, they need to start first by creating the, yes. the scale set. And this is essentially the example on how to do mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if customer wants to implement this uh, SAP workload on with uh, with VMSS Flex, what first need to do is like create a VMSS Flex. Uh, so currently uh, VMSS Flex without scaling profile cannot be done directly from Azure portal. It needs to be done using PowerShell or CLI. So uh, you can create a virtual machine scale set by defining the zones where I am defining one, two, and three zone and platform fault domain count equal to one. So uh, once this has been created, you can see the screen where you uh, your flexible scale set is available, where uh, availability zones is defined and uh, how many basically fault domain count has been done. So once this uh, flexible scale set is defined, you can basically can create a virtual machine. You can manually add virtual machine into the scale sets. How can it be done? So it, the process is similar to what we do while creating a virtual machine. It's just that we need to select a different option in the availability zone options. So when we create a virtual machine, you provide all the details and all that in availability options. Uh, till now, it's, you were encountering availability set or availability zone, but we uh, there is a third option, which is virtual machine scale set. Select that virtual machine scale set and select the scale set that has been uh, created using this uh, uh, the earlier step. And in that, you can basically now choose an availability zone. So if you are talking about a cross zonal deployment, you can now choose for the database zone one and the secondary database. When you create that, you can select a zone two. So uh, the deployment it is pretty straightforward and how it looks like for uh, other deployment. It's just that you need to create, uh, select the availability uh, virtual machine scale set option here. So uh, moving forward, like uh, Ralsa, do you want to take this? Uh... No, okay, keep going yeah. with the comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as uh, we already talked about, like we have like availability set, availability zone, and now we have virtual machine scale set with FD equal to one. So if we do a quick comparison across these three deployment types, so how the deployment behavior look like. So as I mentioned this, like when we deploy a VM in a virtual machine scale set, we basically uh, select a zone. So inside a zone, it tries to distribute your VM on different uh, on uh, uh, different fault domain on best effort basis. Similarly, on availability zone, it will try to distribute your VM uh, on a different zone. But in this case, it won't be basically um, guaranteeing that your VM will be distributing on different uh, fault domain. So it won't try because each VM is independent when we are deploying using availability zone. Uh, and in availability set, the instance will land within a region uh, and 
and distributed across different fault domain and update domain based on how many fault domain and update domain you have defined during the creation. And now uh, uh, assign VM and manage this to a specific availability zone. So with this, uh, what I emphasize is like uh, when you create a VM, your VM as well as the managed is that it's atta uh, attached to it will be part of the same zone if you are deploying using VMSS flex with FD equal to one. Similarly with availability zone as well, but in availability set that is not the case. And uh, uh, with max spreading of uh, VM on different fault domain, it is possible on virtual machine scale set, um, not available on availability zone. And in availability set, depending on how many fault domain uh, uh, we have defined during the creation. Uh, now, with respect to compute to storage fault domain alignment, um, uh, that is not uh, as VMSS flex FD equal to one is a zonal deployment. In zonal, as zonal becomes the single point of fail, failure, the compute to storage fault domain alignment is currently not available on uh, VMSS flex with FD equal to one. Same way with availability zone, but in availability set, it is available. Uh, with respect to capacity reservation, uh, so yes, you can do a capacity reservation with uh, VMSS flex with FD equal to one and as well as in availability zone, but make sure that uh, the limitation of uh, it needs to be done at VM level and but the limitation of capacity reservation uh, feature in general will be applied uh, to the VM that is deployed even on the VMSS flex. So, so they, if yeah. Yep. I'm just thinking in what, what I mean, if I would be a customer needs to choose. So I said, OK, it's a zonal deployment. So VMSS yeah. flex as a zonal one versus the classical zonal one. I mean, from that table looks me that VMSS flex offer me a more feature, so to say. Uh, yes, the main uh, as we already the main advantage is like max this max spreading of VM on right. different fault domain. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that is something uh, which was basically a challenge for people deploying on availability zone because they don't want their all their VMs of zone one to go down at the same time because of some platform maintenance. So here there is less chance of uh, uh, having that scenario with uh, VMSS flex with FD equal to one. So uh, people who wants to deploy customer who is, wants to deploy deploying a new deploy uh, new SAP workload uh, can really choose this VMSS flex with FD equal to one for cross zonal deployment. I would describe it as simplification, right? Mm, yeah. Because you you can jump through a lot of hoops and and achieve that, but with VMSS flex FD equal one, you 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 achieve the same result by 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 following a much simpler Way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is one of the main advantages here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's HS is anyway quite complex, so why? Yes, else? there is a <laughs> lot, so I will take a simpler. Yes. <laughs> I will take a simpler approach yeah. any day, right? Without making major sacrifices along the yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that this is now the the, the recommended way? So if I, if I want to have high availability. Is this now the recommended way how to set up an SAP system? Um, like, well, for yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, now, for zonal, uh, we advise to go with uh, VMSS flex with FD equal to one. Uh, it's more uh, like as everyone mentions, as Ralisa mentioned, we it's offers simplification. So mm -hmm. yes, we advise like customer to go with uh, um, for zonal deployment with uh, VMSS flex with FD equal to one. But, but but it depends on like customer requirements. So we have like I, I will be discussing on different high availability options. Uh, but uh, uh, we are not basically going away from what we currently offer. Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. Uh, it's yep, probably go a good segue to to the next slide where we can yeah. uh, touch upon that, right? Um, so for high availability um, deployments. Um, Yes, I mean, VMSS Flex with FD Core 1 becomes um, a forefront runner, right? Mm -hmm. I do want to clarify something else here from um, our colleagues and from customers. It doesn't mean that we're going to start, we're going to stop supporting um, understood. the other deployment patterns, right? Yeah. So that, that, that should be clear. Um, the documentation is all updated. Um, the slide contains the, the links to our documentation. I mean, it's it's one more um, 
feather in our portfolio for yep. Um, yep. high availability reference architectures and, and an important one because as Dennis highlighted earlier, um, it's a strategic area uh, mm -hmm. for us and, and we have invested a lot in this area and we're going to continue to invest a lot in um, DMSS Flex for, for SAP deployments on Azure. Now, um, historically, right, um, there, are, there are different patterns you can use to, to deploy your um, artifacts, your infrastructure for SAP system on Azure. Um, you, you can have um, a situation where you have different zones in a region um, and then you know the first well the, the first and the second column would apply right for, for for regions where there are availability zones but um there are also still some regions where are there are no availability zones um, yeah. mm -hmm. possible and you know in this case obviously one continue to to go on uh, with a deployment for with availability sets and you can also do the option um with um Flex scale set, but with FB equal one, but you don't choose any zones in this situation. So you can't, right? And then um, we don't talk very often about non HA deployments. So, but if you, Dennis, if you can transition to, to the next slide, um, I mean, there are situations where um, you don't deploy um, an SAP system in HA, right? And you still might wanna be able to, to achieve, for instance, a situation where you wanna protect your app servers, right? Yeah. So one example, for instance, could be, um, I mean, you can have a copy of your production system for performance testing or for stress testing. You may not need a chain this system, right? But it's still an important system if you are running regular perf tests in it. So um, Going with VMSS Flex with FD equal one would offer you um, an opportunity to protect, for instance, uh, from a situation where you lose all your app servers, right? So that, that's that's another um, advantage of, of using it. Um, also for non-HA options, we're not stopping support for uh, the, um, the constructs we have already introduced historically. So no need to worry about that. And um, yeah, I mean, with that, I think that's all so, we have for today. So mm -hmm. would it be this table for HA, non-HA? Okay, these are different options, mm -hmm. single zone and no zone and so on and so forth. So would that be upper road more recommended? I mean, all of them are supported, no doubt. Uh, would it be more kind of from your perspective, more, more recommended? So basically from up or down, it's like mm -hmm. top level kind of as you Think it's, it's um, for, 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 a, for HA, I would say yes. For non-HA, um, I don't know that we can describe it as recommended versus not recommended. I mean, in a yeah. non-HA option, obviously, you've already made the decision that you're not going to have the complete protection of the sure, system, right? Sure, yeah. So it, it's it's a it's a weaker case, I would case to say that we recommend the top option, the top option for non-HA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for HA, yes. Yeah. Okay, super. Yeah. So if means yeah, I think every every customer is unique. So we support all the scenarios. It's like mm, uh, as we are deploying for the cross zone, we want like for HA system, uh, people should uh, uh, use this uh, VMSS flex with FD equal to one. But um, make sure I means uh, uh, understand we support other scenarios as well. So check it out like based on their requirement, customer requirement, if that is basically suitable for them. Uh, if not, uh, uh, they can basically choose other uh, uh, scenarios as well, deployment framework as well. Yep. So uh, with that, I think we are uh, ah. uh, done. But these are all uh, uh, the references. One, yes. Yes, the Francis one, and and I want to thank the Goran for his amazing work for uh, uh, creating a PowerShell script. Uh, if for the customer who wants to transition from uh, 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 traditional deployment availability set or availability zone to VMSS Flex with FD equal to one, uh, I emphasize to check the Goran's blog. Uh, he has developed a script, PowerShell script, which basically helps customer to move from uh, from the existing deployment to VMS's Flex. Uh, he did some amazing work on it. Yeah. So we we will have, I think, probably dedicated session on this. Yeah. But the point is, of course, if you 
deploy a new system, you go to yeah. new deployment directly. Yeah. But if you have an existing system like a zonal one, and you want to move from that classical zonal one to the VMSS Flex with the zones yeah. to get those advantages, then basically currently, I mean, script would be one of the way how to do it. And we will do, I think, a separate session with more time. Yeah. 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 It makes it easier. Makes yes. It easier. Make it easier. Yeah. 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 And basically, okay. not to forget all those documentation, great ones yes. by by your team. Two two of you are doing, and yeah, um, yeah we have included some of the FAQs, like we what we uh, like got from the customers, and while we are doing some testing, so do check that out. It will answer a lot of your a uh, lot of the questions as well. Yeah, it's in the typical area um, yeah. on um, learn.microsoft.com under um, SAP workload, so it should be. Fairly easy to to find. Yeah. 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 Great. Perfect. So I, I I mean, for me, I have a high expectation of this. I mean, I I know still there is um, ongoing improvements, of course, like mm -hmm. for anything. But I honestly I do see a lot of benefits. Um, benefits in simplification. You know, like. Uh, HA is anyway too <laughs> anyway complicated. <laughs> it's Let's not simplify. Easy, yes. <laughs> Troubleshooting capacity constraint PPG leads. I mean, I'm seeing, you know, so this relaxation is basically really helpful. It's really yeah, I helpful. Agree. I would yes. agree. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we can say, okay, definitely for the HA, for the Zonal One, the MSS Flex, it's really strongly recommended to go, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. For new, especially for new deployments. I mean, for, yeah, yeah. Especially for the it should be no, consi no brainer. Consider it. I mean, start with with the latest and the greatest. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, great, super, super, guys. Th thanks a lot. I mean, I'm pretty sure we will have you back again because I know yeah. there will be. There's <laughs> always something yeah. new coming, right? Um, but definitely for the community, that's a really big help to demystify uh, the VMSS Flex, you know, and the benefit for your SAP customers, right? Yeah.